Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, and I'm very excited because in this episode, I get to break down and give my thoughts on season two, episode one of His Dark Materials, the HBO TV series. And if you're just joining me for the very first time, welcome. I did a breakdown of season one as well, so you can check that out if you're curious. You know, just search for it on my channel. But overall, I'm very excited and you know, going into this, it is going to be spoiler filled in terms of the the episode. So if you haven't seen it, you know, watch that first, then, you know, come back. And as much as I can, I'm going to save thoughts and comparisons of book to to the TV show towards the end. And I'm going to call spoilers out for that specifically when the time comes. So that way, if you haven't yet read the book, you know, I'm not going to ruin anything for you. Um, so, and I'll do, I'll do my best to not let anything slip in, in between that, right? So, overall, I'm very excited. You know, this is a TV show. If you watched my breakdown of season one, you know, overall, I, I had a lot of praise for. You know, I think the downside of season one was that you know, while overall it was great, um, the, the biggest knock is like the demons, y you know, they weren't always ever present, even though they're such a big part of the story. Now, I think as things are splintered off, um, it's a lot easier to make the CGI demons more manageable. So I think we'll see a little bit of, of them um, in better at better doses than we did in season one. And, you know, I'm excited. I, I think just in terms of everything you know obviously it's a different world we live in now than when season one came out and so to kind of see this like you know for me i grew up uh on on the books you know uh, the golden compass the 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 subtle knife and the amber spyglass and so you know and, and when the movie came out the golden compass i was i was very hopeful of that it didn't live up fully to the to my expectations and so now to see it in this incarnation is very exciting so uh season two it couldn't have come at a better time for me i'm really really excited for it and season or episode one rather did not disappoint overall i thought i thought it was really well done you know i think i'm gonna kind of jump around just a little bit um because you know i really want to talk about Chittagatse, first and foremost. Um, but I don't want to talk about Will and Lyra, so I'm going to like save them towards the end because they are the, the meat of this episode. But, you know, this Chittagatse, I, I, I was looking forward to this. And, you know, for me, having grown up reading the books, I had a different kind of mentality of what the city looked like. Uh, to me, it was a lot more vibrant, like a Mediterranean city, a lot more colorful, maybe, you know, more like blues and things like that. These were more, I don't know, uh, for lack of a better term, browns. Um, I'm not like that, uh, that well versed in like, you know, all the color ranges and, you know, being able to talk about it in like all these abstract terms. But to me, if I had to say like it's more brown, whereas mentally for me, it was always more blue. But I did love it. And, you know, it, it's also interesting just in that fact of, you know, season one, to the best of my recollection, HBO, um, HBO Max wasn't a thing. You know, there's HBO Go and all those other things. But now HBO Max, it's great um, now that I have it, uh, you know, seeing kind of the behind the scenes stuff and, and the way they made the city. They really built it from scratch. It, they, it, it wasn't a place that existed. And, um, you know, as far as the inspiration, a lot of a lot of Escher kind of style paintings, you know, ones that kind of defy reality and and loop in around themselves and have these patterns. You can see that evidenced in the architecture, the cinematography, and so forth. So I really, really love this, um, you know, as just a great starting point overall in terms of where we are. Now, as I said, I'm going to talk about Will and Lyra. Um, in a little bit, uh, because they, they are the bulk of the episode. What I want to focus on now is, let's start with Lee Scoresby. You know, uh, it's, it's great because Lee is always this character who had a fondness for Lyra. He's, he's this mercenary, um, 
And, you know, he's not in, in this whole prophecy thing, right? That's, we open up the episode on the prophecy, kind of setting the table of what's at stake. And obviously there's a lot at stake just by what they're saying. You know, it could either be a new world or the end of the world, <laughs> right? Two very uh, distinct things, you know? Uh, one really great, one uh, eh, not, not so good, right? But uh, Lee Scoresby, you know, what I appreciate, I think he represents kind of the everyday man in the sense that, you know, it's like, I don't know what I can do type of thing in this, but I know where my heart's at and I care for this person. I will do what I can um, to, 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 you know, to help that person. You know, I don't care about the prophecy. I care about the person. I think that's a, that's a good archetype. You know, I think that type of person is in a lot of different stories, but, but I love the way Lee Scoresby is portrayed and, and, um, kind of written in this edition. And yeah, I'm really looking for, we didn't get a lot of him, right? You know, we're, we just kind of sprinkled him in, uh, you know, the, his biggest part came in the, uh, the meeting with the witches with Serafina and, and whatnot. But, you know, I, I thought for the little screen time that let's say he did have, it was very powerful. So I certainly enjoyed it. Now the witches were certainly a big part of this episode. As I said, they open up the episode by telling about the prophecy. We get Lee with in the meeting, but the big part of you know the the crux of the the dramatization of this episode is really with Mrs. Coulter and the hosted witch. And the way this is executed, I thought was really well done because it shows kind of the stakes in the sense of more specifically like Mrs. Coulter. Uh, you know, squaring off the magisterium and being like, you know, you failed, you failed, but I also failed and now we can't fail anymore. And so she has this deep sense, um, you know, to accomplish this, right? To gain information out of the witch. And what I appreciate, it was, it was a horrific torture scene, but without being like gratuitous. Uh, so I thought it upped the up the ante without without uh, crossing bounds. So I, I did appreciate that, and you know it's it it's good to see Mrs. Coulter. You know I I as a character in the books, right? And this isn't spoiling anything. She's a very nuanced character because she has her own motives and things like that. But at the end of the day, she does care about her daughter Lyra, and so I thought this kind of came through. You know, where she's, when she's uh, working on the witch, you know, she wants to know the nickname of Lyra. And you could tell that it's both for herself um, as a mother, as well as to make sure she doesn't fail for the magisterium. And I thought that was really well done, really well played. So I truly appreciated that. Um, and, you know, the, the, the the witch um, in this case coming in and and killing, uh, you know, sacrificing her her own, you know, is true to the book and I thought really well executed and kind of sets up something unique, uh, you know, with with what's kind of you know uh, the the power dynamic within the magisterium. So I thought that was really well done um, in terms of the way it played. So, um, you know, overall, overall first episodes, I feel like, and let me know if you agree or disagree, uh, in this sense, like there, there's, it's more the, the meat of stuff to talk about is less about like kind of what's there, more about like what's to come, like the implications of things. So I'm going to talk a lot about that, especially once I can kind of talk about the book comparison. So if I'm not getting into full specifics, that's why. So, you know. Just kind of hold off if you're curious, um, especially if you've read the books. And now, as far as Lyra and Will go, what, what I, I thought this was really well done. I thought their chemistry really shined. One of, it, I, I thought they inserted moments of humor that weren't always there in the book, at least as I, I didn't recognize them. One in particular, when, when uh, it's brought up that the specters eat uh, adults, you know, and Will puts down the coin to pay for the food 
She's like, don't, you know, Lyra's like, don't, don't go acting too uh, adult because the specters will get you. I thought that was just such a brilliant touch. It made me laugh. Um, and both in terms of how they acted, the way it's written, and the way it was filmed really showcased the, the kind of bonding f that, that is happening. Within one episode, you could see tenderness. Obviously, there's a reserved nature to both of them. But, uh, you know, I, I thought it was really well done because, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, it's uh, tipping the hand in any sort of way to say, like, they're going to be very important and they're going to need each other. And so to establish this relationship this early on this well, I think does a lot of heavy lifting um, you know, for what's to come later on. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, you know, and we, what I also love about this episode is we got a viewpoint into the specters, you know, we kind of saw, you know, what is a specter? Um, and overall we, we got a good tour of the town. We really did. I mean, I think spatially, you know, where the cafe is, where everyone else is, I think, um, it's, it's truly, you know, I, th I thought they did it well without being like, hey, let's go on this grand tour. And certainly the tower is a menacing presence. Uh, towers, you know, whether like Lord of the Rings or, or anything like that, towers are always very symbolic, right? Um, and so the way they filmed it, the way they discussed it, I thought was really well done. And, you know, one of the interesting aspects that that you take for granted is in season one, you know, we, we got to know what a demon is and all these things. And so it's a nice reset with this episode. You know, it, it, it's this very much fish out of water aspect. And when I appreciate it, it's like, who is the fish out of water here? You know, we, of course, in general, identify more with Will because that's our world. We don't have demons, but nonetheless, we can identify with Lyra too. So it is very much like, wait, who is the fish out of water here? And, yeah, so overall, really fantastic episode. Now, uh, this is the part where I'm going to talk about the book um, and the books and kind of where things are headed and make some comparisons. So if if you're not interested in that because you know, you're worried that it's going to be too spoiler-filled, then you can tune out. Um, you know, thank you for making it this far. Uh, I, I would encourage you to comment down below or hit me up on social media with your thoughts. I certainly would appreciate what you thought of this episode. would love to converse with you. But without further ado, let's get into kind of the more spoiler slash book territory, right? First off, one of the interesting t things to me, like when they showcased, you know, kind of what's what's to come in the next episodes, I thought they tip, over tipped their hands, you know? Like I think teasers and trailers give way too much. And one of the aspects that I thought, I mean, of course, like, you know, just by, if you know the, just the titles of the books, right? Even if you've never read them, the, the subtle knife, you know that there's a knife. But I, I what I didn't like is, in, in the in the teasers, they literally tip their hand on what this knife is and what it does. I didn't like that um, because if you're new, you know, if you've never read the book, I think I think um, that would have been a nice surprise. Um, so I, I I didn't like that aspect of it. But um, you know what what's interesting to me is as far as the structure of this, the the episode itself is like mini scenes versus chapters because in the book, you know, you you play like. Uh, Will and Lyra's adventure in this whole thing would be like a chapter in of itself. Then you would go to the witches. Uh, then you would go to uh, Mrs. Coulter and so forth. So you can kind of switch things around in that sense. This, you know, you get a, a, a mini scene here. You, you know, you get, you get, you, you let's say like, I'm just going to hypothetically say that these were three chapters. And, you know, instead of playing, you know, boom, 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 they intercut the, the chapters into this episode. And so I do actually like that. Um, I thought that obviously, you know, it's an adaptation. It's not a straight translation. So, I'll, you know, you have to make concessions. And, and I thought that, that that was a good concession. Um, overall, you know, I, I felt like as a first episode, you know, as I said, it's a it's a very heavy setup episode. I thought, you know, they kind of laid down the stake. But y y overall, they need to establish Will and Lyra. And so it was much more humane episode. And so I I think from what I gather, the next episodes will be a lot more action-packed. 
Whereas I thought this was a little bit slower paced than, than some of the past episodes. Not a bad thing, I'm just you know saying it more as a matter of fact versus assigning it a judgment. You know, what, what I'm excited for uh, coming up it is, and I, and I said like, you know, even though I know what the knife does and whatnot, I would have appreciated if they held back on how it looks and so forth. Now, granted, we know, um, we know M Mrs. Coulter's kind of accomplice, you know, that travels between both Oxfords and we've seen kind of the doorway already. So it's not that much of a stretch, but nonetheless, I would have, you know, I think seeing the knife in action would have offered visually a nice like reveal that I thought they could have held on to a little bit more. Uh, I am looking forward to Lee Lee's adventures with with Will's dad, you know, down the pipeline, uh, and you know certainly Lyra with with Will in 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 the Will's Oxford is going to be fun. And one of the things that I love is, you know, we we get pre we get glimpses of Mary and she's with a quantum computer. And this is great because back in the day you know, when this was written, quantum computing wasn't a thing. And so the fact that they can draw on, you know, new emerging technologies to tie in, you know, what, what Philip Pullman wrote, I think is fantastic. And I'm so, I'm looking forward to that very much so. And, you know, uh, we got a glimpse of Mary in the previews. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have watched the previews because I think, um, even though I know it's coming down the pipeline, I would have loved to see the reveal visually of Mary and so forth. Now I know what she looks like. Um, but we'll see. And, and um, you know, one of the things that is menacing to me, you know, when, you know, when I first read the books, you know, I kind of was Will and Lyra's age. And so they didn't seem that young to me. Now kind of seeing all, whether it's Will, Lyra, or the rest of the Chittagatse, um, um, you know, youth, man, they look, they look really young. And, and I thought like the casting of the kids in the city was just really well done. And, and it's just menacing, like in terms of the innocence they have and so forth. So yeah, it, I, I just thought that was really well done. Um, but yeah. Um, and listen, I could sit here, you, you know, maybe, as you're listening to me, you're like, okay, um, I'm not being as overly critical. And I don't know, call it my 2020 brain that there's just so many things in this world um, that that require attention that are, that are, you know, truly bad things and whatnot that to have to nitpick a TV show. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just not in that place. You know, of course, like, one of the great things about art is you can always revisit and have different thoughts every time you, you see it. So who knows if I rewatched even this episode tomorrow, would I have the same thoughts? I don't know. But as of now, um, it, it was just a welcomed breath of, of fresh air, if you will, um, to, you know, what is otherwise a very hard year for everyone, you know, to varying degrees, you know, some of us have it harder than others, but but yeah, you know, um, nonetheless, uh, it, it was a well, it, you know, I, I, I welcomed it. I was looking forward to it. And, you know, in that sense, it didn't disappoint. So I'm looking forward to where it's headed. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is they're layering how the magisterium is operating. Um, you know, I think they're really defining that in a way that uh, the books didn't fully explore because, it was, you know, the magisterium was always this kind of more mysterious thing. And Mrs. Coulter was kind of the representation of it um, versus like seeing, you know, the inner workings to the depth that at least so far we've seen on the show. Um, so I think that's a nice added element to the show. But yeah, listen, you know, you don't have to agree with me. You, you can have differing thoughts and we can be respectful. So I look forward to that dialogue. In fact, I invite it, you know, comment down below, hit me up on social media. I love, I love hearing your perspective and and whatnot and so let's 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 chat but man if there's if there's anything that i came away with i am just in awe of daphne keen like she is she is a tremendous actress and i'm looking forward to seeing her not only in this series but man wants to come down the line i think she has a phenomenal future ahead um 
so those are my thoughts. You know, I hope I hope you've enjoyed what I had to say. And as I said, you know, I welcome um, agreement or disagreement. So let, let's chat. Let's talk. Um, thank you. And I look forward to more discussions on episodes coming up. Bye.